Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. I am Sam I.B. reporting for TheMediaSpeaks.com. If you haven't gone there, make sure you do. Click on my name, and you will see that I've been doing articles lately. The most recent, recent one is called Fukushima World War II. And if the name doesn't make any sense to you, it's because you haven't read the article yet. Um, I want to say also there's a show posted that I did last Saturday. Um, that would have been the 13th. Well, it's after midnight. That would have been the 12th. Make sure you go and look that up. Uh, January 12th, 2013, and the media speaks. TSA moves to socialize internal travel. This is from Kurt Nemo. Wendy McElroy, writing for the Dollar Vigilante, this is from InfoWars, has uncovered a TSA move to extend its airport Gestapo zone to the nation's mass transit and highways. Um, Gestapo is, uh, for those of you that don't know, my New Year's resolution to explain, um, an illegal police force that pretty much took over um, the country. That is exactly what we are seeing here with the TSA. The TSA is not the police. <coughs> McElroy spotlights an application on page 71431 of volume 77, number 231 of the Federal Register that constitutes a preliminary step forward systematically expanding TSA's authority from airports to highways and almost every other means of public travel. The effort will eliminate the ability to travel anonymously around the country and remove one of the last remaining differences between the U.S. and a total police state, McElroy rates. So, for those of you that may not know, we do have a Fourth Amendment in this country, and it makes things like this illegal. You are not allowed to do these sorts of things. You're not allowed to restrict people's right to own guns. That's the Second Amendment. You're not allowed to re restrict their travel, or in this instance, uh, direct quoting, um, you, uh, you're not allowed to prohibit somebody from traveling freely. You're not allowed to assume that they are guilty. These are all things that are against the Constitution. And these things matter because they're coming after them, one after the other after the other, and people somehow are missing this, and I don't know how. This is from Mail Online. Syria rebels beheaded a Christian and fed him to the dogs as fears grow over Islamist atrocities. If you don't know, Al-Qaeda, the, the, the great mystical beast here, um, is believed and proven by many, actually. It's known that the United States government created Al-Qaeda. They did so to, uh, among other things, to uh, create instability for Russia when they were fighting Afghanistan. Well, if we're to believe the party line here, Al-Qaeda is what led to the Twin Towers disaster, or 9-11, blah, blah, blah. Well, if that's the case, then why are we funding them now? Why did we fund them in Libya? Um, Muammar Gaddafi, and this is mentioned in, uh, again, the article Fukushima World War II, Muammar Gaddafi was in no way, shape, matter, or form an Al-Qaeda member. So to overthrow Gaddafi, the United States funded rebels. Those rebels were Al-Qaeda. Well, we're doing it again. Let's see what wonderful, wonderful people these uh, rebels in Syria are. Syrian rebels beheaded a Christian man and fed his body to dogs, according to a nun who says the West is ignoring atrocities committed by Islamist extremists. The nun said taxi driver Andre Arbashi, 38, was kidnapped after his brother was heard complaining that fighters against the ruling regime behaved like bandits. That's because you behave like bandits, you pig swines. She said his headless corpse was found by the side of the road, surrounded by hungry dogs. He had recently married and was soon to be a father. So, not only do we have the United States government repeating the exact same mistakes they made by funding Al-Qaeda to destabilize Russia during the Afghanistan problem, but now we have them doing it again in Libya and Syria. And if you want to know what this kind of thing brings, if you want to see the kind of destitution, look at what Tripoli, Libya was before when they had Gaddafi. And I'm not a big Gaddafi fan, I'm really not. 
that he was certainly better than these people. Um, I'm sure there were atrocities committed, but you didn't have mass beheadings. And you're seeing this more and more there. Look up Coptic Christians um, in the Middle East right now. The people we are funding are killing Christians, and they're doing so for absolutely no good reason whatsoever, other than trying to implement the Islamic uh, fundamentalist dream, which is Sharia law. And I'll tell you what, it's not going to fly here. We don't care if you're offended, okay? I'm a Christian. You know what? People don't care if I'm offended, and they don't have to care if I'm offended. And if I've offended you, good! Um, this is 7 News, uh, Yahoo 7. This was, this was good. I, I was very happy to hear this. Executive at Collapsed Iceland Bank, jailed for fraud. Why is it that only Iceland knows how to handle these sorts of criminals? Why is it we create um, uh, sayings like, too big to fail, when uh, they're creating jail sentences? Like, they're on the right path here. Two former executives of an Icelandic bank, which collapsed in the 08 financial meltdown, were sentenced to jail on Friday for fraud, which led to a 53 million euro loss in the first major trial of Icelandic bankers linked to the crisis. It goes on. All three of the small North Atlantic Island's top banks collapsed in quick succession in 2008 of October due to big debts incurred during a rapid overseas expansion. So what they did is um, the prosecutor said the two approved a loan company which allowed shares of Glitner so that the company could in turn repay the debt to Morgan Stanley. The decision taken outside the regular decision-making process meant that Glitner was too exposed to the company and cost the bank at least 53.7 million euros, the prosecution said. Well, we have criminals here, asked Gerald Salente. We have criminals here. And if you're not interested in the economic side of this show, the part that I'm in right now, then do me a favor. Ask if you're worried about how many, uh, I don't know, how's your standard of living compared to how it used to be? Are you happy with where you are when you're working every day? Do you get everything that's due to you? I'm, I'm not standing here complaining. I'm sitting here complaining. I'm fortunate enough to have a job that pays well. But the point is, it's pure luck. I mean, I'm a, I'm a DJ at a place, and it could close tomorrow. And what could cause that kind of a thing to happen? Another economic downturn like we saw in 08. And I won't be the only one standing in the breadline with you if this happens. But if we start putting these people behind bars, then they cannot do this to us. We need to quit creating excuses like slogans, like too big to fail banks, and start putting the people that made these big banks fail Put them in the bank and reclaim our monetary system based on the Constitution of the United States of America. That is beyond all shadow of a doubt the correct view. Um, this is from Ohio.com. <clears throat> this is right up in my neck of the woods. I'm in Canton, Ohio. This happened in Akron. Akron officer accused of breaking school girl's, girl's arm by Phil Trexler. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, what I am going to do is lay out the specifics. Um, a girl, it says, was walking through the hallways, tearing posters off of the wall, when an officer, and um, it's a Jennings Middle School, Officer John Morgan was the doctor, it says he rushed a 13-year-old Tamika Williams at the doorway, forcing the student backwards across the hall and against the locker. There's a video on it. He breaks her arm. I'm not going to necessarily go in the direction that you think I, that I should go in. Um, back in the dark ages, when I turned 21, I was jumped. And I was, uh, I think some of the people that jumped me were under the age of 18. And I was swinging. And I was punching faces. And I'm not sorry that I did it. So I understand. I do. However, this is overkill. Because when you go into the story... It says that she was mad because she wasn't allowed to wear her jacket. And there is some kind of a school rule against wearing a jacket. You know what? I've been in prison institutions like this before. Where um, it feels like a prison is what I mean. Where everything you do is monitored by somebody who wants to know when you burp. How many times you go to the bathroom. Maybe the girl was cold. 
And maybe she's mad because you have a ridiculous policy. Because we, there you go, we need, obviously, we need to keep our sets plugged in. That's what we need. But beyond that, welcome back. We need to make sure that our kids are in an environment where they can do what's expected of them. But we don't need to make what's expected of them so extreme that they're not allowed to wear a coat. And if they start pulling posters off of walls that we break their arm. We don't need police for this. If you have ridiculous rules, those rules need to be addressed. And if the kids are creating a problem, that's what detention, suspension, and expulsion is for. We do not need the gulag, the TSA, or police officers in our damn schools. And if they do, they should be there for um, non-intervental not And by that, I mean non-criminal intervention. I mean, if it's criminal, yes. Um, I'm not even against, you know, making sure that the weapons aren't, in, aren't uh, you know, being brought into the school like Sandy Hook. Although I do think that people should have the right to conceal and carry in a school. But my point is, the police do not need to be the hall monitors. This is ridiculous. And if a school is that violent, then they need to start expelling students and quit leaving students in there just so that they have a higher number count so that they can take more money and build bigger administration offices. Um, <clears throat> this is the last thing I want to get to, and this bothers me, and I'll tell you why. I like fast food. I don't. I, I do the emergency thing twice a day. Um, I take echinacea. I take calcium, magnesium. If I can't sleep, I take melatonin. I take fish oil a couple of times a day. Um, I recently uh, managed to finally catch a head cold. I've been taking umka, and uh, it works very well. It's all natural. And um, I'm very impressed with it so far. A little expensive, but impressed with it. Um, and uh, honey and cinnamon, which seems to be lightening up the cold. Uh, and I have not been using any synthetics at all this time. Well, having said all that, I also love a good fast food burger. And I'm not going to go and say who my favorite is. I've done so before, but I'm not going to because the company recently angered me even more than normal. But I like them. I don't have a problem paying money to not be poisoned. And when these bastards do the sorts of things that I'm about to read here, it's just beyond the pale. It really is, and that's what frustrates me. Anthony uh, Gucciardi, uh, PrisonPlanet.com, McDonald's McRib Sandwich, a Franken creation of GMOs, toxic ingredients, and banned ingredients. It's McRib season, and thousands across the nation are scrambling to use online websites, so I'm not even going to promote it. Um... What's really inside the McRib? I'm going to read this part. Specifically, what makes it such a food abomination? Containing over 70 ingredients, the McRib is full of surprises, including restructured meat technology that includes traditionally discarded animal parts, that is balls, lips, tongues, genitals, for you Lady Gaga fans. And again, Lady Gaga fans might kind of like it. Um, traditionally discarded animal parts brought together to create a rib-like substance. Here's some of the disturbing substances found within the McRib sandwich. A flower bleaching agent used in yoga mats. Um, it is A-Z-O-D-I-C-A-R-D-B-O-N, I'm sorry, A-Z-O-D-I-C-A-R-B-O-N-A-M-I-D-E. Azercarabinamide. And it lies among one of the ingredients. Um... It's banned in many countries. They're not allowed to use it in Australia or Europe. And if they do, it could result in a $450,000 fine and 15 years in jail. McDonald's McRib is famous in some circles for utilizing what's known as restructured meat technology. We already got to that. Look, I understand it's not health food. It's not meant to be health food. I don't have a problem with it. But can we at least agree to get the toxins out of the damn food? If the price of the damn McRib goes up a quarter, it's fine. Could you please leave the toxins out of it? You are listening to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Good night, God bless, and please donate if you can, because if you do, 
All money goes to a better show. And friends, this show is growing. It's on the Media Speaks now. I am part of the Media Speaks and proud to be so. Uh, recently, Alex Jones linked to Bob Costas was right. 1,083 views and climbing. People, help me. I'm trying to get good news and good information out to help people. Please assist me in doing that. Thanks. Good night. God bless.